Leszokhat-e magától egy narcisztikus a pornózásról és a maszturbálásról, vagy ez nála kényszeres? Milyennek a pszichológiai aspektusa? Porn, constant consumption of porn is an addiction. Similar to any addiction, like alcoholism, drug abuse. It has a compulsive element in the sense that uh, the narcissist needs the, not only narcissist, any porn, any porn addict needs the pornography. Um, the same way that a drug addict needs a drug, or alcoholic needs a shot, and so on and so forth. So there's nothing different about this, and the question is generalized. Can an addict quit an addiction? And, and the answer is yes, of course. Any addict can quit an addiction. Mm. The prognosis is not good. The recidivism is very high in the sense that an addict that who quits an addiction usually has remission or relapse and returns to the addiction. It's very common. 80% of alcoholics return to alcohol after they have quit alcohol, for example. That's 80% within one year. So, porn addiction is the same. The thing with porn addiction is that it, um, it, uh, it's multidimensional. Uh, it provides answers to many problems and many questions. It, provides phys it has a physiological aspect, but also a psychological aspect, and it solves, it solves relationship problems. For example, imagine that uh, the, the narcissist does not want to cheat. He's afraid to lose his partner. Porn is a solution. So porn comes handy, it's instrumental, and so on. The ch chances or likelihood of a porn addict um, ceasing to consume porn is very low because porn has no stigma. Stigma helps a lot. And also porn doesn't lead to adverse consequences. If you get drunk, you can end up having unprotected sex with a stranger, and then you get sexually transmitted disease, and then you can die if it's AIDS. <laughs> I mean, the risks are high. It's a reckless behavior to drink. Um, drink is, has also a social dimension. Most drinking is social, actually. So people drink in society. So when they get drunk, they can do stupid things. If they do stupid things with the boss, I mean, <laughs> the next day they're fired. So. Uh, alcohol has, uh, can have serious consequences, and drug, of co drugs, of course, you can end up with the wrong people, with the wrong place, and in the wrong cemetery. So, these are problems. A porn is a solitary, uh, a solitary activity with zero risk, in effect. Only benefits. So the cost, the cost of porn is zero. The benefits are total. And this, there is no social stigma. If, you, if you're an alcoholic, many people will look at you like that. If you're a drug addict, of course, including the police, will not be happy. But if, you are, if you're consuming porn, everyone consumes porn. It's a thing everyone does. It's, so the incentives to give up porn are very close to zero. The social incentives, individual incentives. And so the, the prognosis of giving up on porn addiction are very dim. I don't think, it's, I don't think anyone would do it. Szintén a praxisomban tapasztaltam, miközben a narcisztikusokat kócsoltam, hogy más és más a szexuális élete egy 20-as, 30-as, 40-es, 50-es, 60-as éveiben járó vagy a fölötti narcisztikusnak. Azt figyeltem meg, hogy a 30-as évek közepére már általában kialakul a kényszeresség és a függőség. A 30-as években már komoly szerepet kapnak náluk a szexuális devianciák, a fétisek, az extrém szexualitás, mint például a BDSM, az aranyeső, vagy a koprofília, az örülékkel kapcsolatos élvezetek. De a pedofília, a hebefília, ami a tinédzserekkel való szex, a látens vagy nyílt homoszexualitás, a swingerség, azaz a többes szex, a transvestitizmus, feminizáció, forszett szex is ide tartozik. Később kérdezlek majd külön-külön is ezekről, a különleges szexuális szokásokról, de addig is mondd el, kérlek, hogy hogyan függ ez össze az életkorral. First of all, thank you very much for the arousing and exciting list. I would like to have a copy later, if you don't mind. Um, it's related to age because narcissism changes with age. Uh, all narcissists and all narcissism has a very pronounced uh, antisocial component, um, kind of psychopathic component. 
in psychopathy. This psychopathy component has to do with novelty seeking, dominance seeking, risk taking, uh, defiance, especially defiance of authority and accepted social mores and conventions and laws. Um, and uh, this together, they are the antisocial dimension of narcissism. Now, exactly like psychopathy proper, exactly like antisocial personality disorder, the antisocial dimension of narcissism peaks. Is it a maximum when the narcissist is between 35 and 40? And after age 40, it goes down and vanishes completely by age 45, 50. By age 45, 50, the narcissist doesn't have any more antisocial elements in his narcissism. And by the way, majority of psychopaths are not psychopaths anymore by age 45, 50. It's the same with borderline. 50% of all people diagnosed with borderline personality disorder after age 35, 50, they lose the diagnosis. They are no longer borderline. Well, cluster, B person, cluster B disorders have a life cycle, which is age-related. And they diminish and, and literally disappear after typically age 40, 45. So this would explain this, what you have described. Behaviors which have to do with risk, with dominance, with defiance, with aggression, uh, antisocial behaviors, um, behaviors which have to do with subjugation of other people, dehumanization, objectification, all these behaviors which are essentially psychopathic behaviors, they would peak in the 30s um, up to age 40 in a narcissist. Now, the thing with the narcissist is that once he had developed this set of behaviors, they had become what we call default-based behaviors. They are the behaviors that he knows. He doesn't know anything else. And even though he doesn't have the impulses anymore, he doesn't have the urges anymore, that's the only thing he knows is only sex. That's how he does sex. He doesn't know better. <clears throat> so he continues these behaviors, but they provide less and less reward. They, they are less, less and less pleasant or less and less rewarding because the urges are not there. He just does it automatically because that's what he does. It's like someone who, when he was very young, uh, was eating only caviar. So when he grows up, he eats only caviar. And gradually, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not tasty anymore, not interesting anymore. But he doesn't know. He never heard of bread. He never heard of sausages. He just knows caviar. So he continues to eat caviar all his life. And it's the same with the narcissist. So narcissists after age 40 are what we call sex discrepant. Their sexual practices do not provide sexual pleasure and gratification and fulfillment. So they, because of that, they escalate. They, they, they are like drug addicts. First you take one shot, then two shots, then six shots, to get the same effect. So they escalate the sexual behavior to, to try to recoup or re recapture the initial effect that they had when they were 30s. When, when the narcissist is 30, he has his first golden shower, and it's the most amazing, stunning thing in the world, and he remembers this. He remembers this experience. But then he's 50, and he has a golden shower, and it's nothing except wet towels. You know? and, and he says, wait a minute, uh, maybe golden shower is not enough. Maybe I have to escalate and radicalize the behavior. Maybe I have to make it more kinky. Maybe I have to make it many, many times. Maybe I have to make it in a group. Maybe. So he tries, to, he tries to improvise on the basic behavior. He tries to augment it. He tries to embellish it, and decorate it, and ornament it, so that it recaptures the original excitement. But he, he always fails. So as he fails, he gravitates to more and more extreme behaviors more extreme behaviors. So if he was into discipline, for example, in his 30s, so as a discipline in his 30s, a slap on the face would obtain the result. By the time he's 50 or 60, he would demand extreme whipping, extreme spanking, blood drawing, um, uh, being hanged, you know, uh, shibagi. Uh, he, would he, would, he would go to extremes. It's still the same psychodynamic phenomenon, but he would need to escalate to, to exactly like a drug addict to recapture the... And, and it will never happen again. He will never recapture again. So narcissists are constantly sexually frustrated 
and, uh, and at the end of life, many of them withdraw completely. They become schizoid and they completely withdraw from society, from people, from sex, from, from everything because of this. Uh... Anyhow, that's the age, the, the age cycle.